Hey folks, Jonathan here. Most of you know that uh, I bought three of these uh, GMC 4500s in uh, Greensboro, and the original intention was to fix two of them, but Bobby had a issue, a friend of mine with his, and wrecked it, so we used enough parts to fix his. This is uh, the one that uh, has 180,000 miles on it, supposed to have bloat head gasket. Now, it was missing the radiator, and I pulled the radiator and this tank. This was stuff that come off of the one that, that we pulled the body off of to put on Bobby's. Got it all on here. It's still missing the brake lines from here down, but I do have them on that truck too. But uh, it looks like we're just gonna end up putting one together. It's gonna be this truck uh, because of the mileage being lower. But anyway, it ran really good. It was supposed to have a blunt head gasket. Uh, but I had no way of testing it with no radiator in it, of course, so we're getting ready to try to start it. We've been charging the batteries here on it, jumping it off, and once we get it started, we're going to let it run a little bit, and hopefully we'll be able to figure it out. Uh, on these Duramax, when they blow a head gasket, usually they just put pressure in the radiator, and I don't have a pressure tester to put on it to be able to check, but I can tell if the hoses start getting too hard, and uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Let's see if it's going to start. Been sitting quite a while. And this one's going to need some work. It's going to need a seat put in it. A little bit of door panel work. The steering wheel is shot. Sorry about the light here. I think I'm going to prime the fuel pump. This thing, sometimes these things lose prime when they're sitting. It's kind of hard to get to, but you got a plunger over here on top of the filter. right there you can pump it and the bleeder is on the other side of it you break loose with a big flat screwdriver so let me get this thing bled we'll try it all right pumped it up till it was hard it should start but no nope. and let it charge a little longer We'll let it charge and then we'll try it again. I darn sign up. Got a little bit of seat problems. Got a mess in it. The seat over here is shot. I'm hoping I got enough good stuff to get it together here. Alright, I'll see what happens here. Okay, we got it started anyway. Uh forgot to turn the camera on. Temperature's not coming up yet. We got water in it. I think emergency brake, I hope, works on this side. Well, that's a good, good sign. It's trying to move. Don't have no regular brakes, but anyway, we'll let it run here a while, and if uh, anything changes, I'll show you. Not butter. Hoses are not getting hard at all yet. Sounds really good. All right, I'll show you more. Okay, I think we have confirmed it's got a blown head gasket. It's foaming, as you can see. I don't have a problem with that being what's wrong with it. I just don't like to not know what's wrong with it. So what we'll do is uh, line everything up. I, they may have taken the thermostats out of this thing because the temperature stand down at 100. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm sorry about that sun. Yeah, the temperature stand down at 100. So 
probably end up having to put a set of thermostats in. We're gonna pull the heads off and see uh, see if it's just a gasket gone and maybe replace the head bolts and maybe go with some studs or something. But we're gonna get this one fixed. This one's got 140 or 184,000 miles on it, which it's not a lot of miles, so it's well worth fixing. But uh, I drove it down the driveway and back so it does drive and uh, I'll show you something else I picked up. Okay folks, I just wanted to show you, I picked these up out of the uh, scrap yard the other day and both of them are 6.6 .6 Duramaxes. This one came out of a uh, two ton or out of a 4500 or 5500 and this one came out of a pickup truck. I couldn't see anything on the outsides of the blocks that were bad so I went ahead and bought them and it was just scrap weight at the uh, at the junkyard so what I'm going to do is tear these two down and put all the parts in one of my boxes I got just to save parts and you know if I do need a head or something maybe there's a good head on this one or the other one and then I've got the one that grenaded the bottom in in uh, the truck we pulled the cab off of for Bobby's so it should have a good set of heads on it just in case I happen to need a head or something like that on the other one half year 2004 and up uh, had the better engine and you can spot them real easy by whether the uh, injectors are on the outside uh, on the LB7 you know the bow covers smooth it don't indent in right here and the injectors are under the bow cover so uh, anyway good for parts I mean nothing Nothing really great here, but you know, you know, never know what you're going to need. We've actually already used a couple bolts off of this. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's the little things. But uh, the uh, and for JC, I had to move a pile of 6.0 engines to get to these uh, two Duramax engines. So, and I am just joking. But anyway, all right, all right. Next thing, my four-door truck, Summit. That is actually two gallons of uh, red paint from Summit with the hardener and reducer. That's the cheapest place I found out you can buy it. I think it's $120 a gallon and it comes with the hardener and reducer and it's a single stage urethane. And I painted my last truck with this same stuff and it was actually basically the same color as the red that I had bought that was nascent that was $302 a gallon without your hardener and, and uh, reducer. Yeah, activator. So uh, this is a good, good paint. I really like it. And uh, I've got a friend that uh, is going to go ahead and paint the truck for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pay him to do it. He uh, needs to make a little cash, and he, you know he can handle it. So it'll work out perfect. All right, we're going to get this to him, and then uh, maybe a week or so we'll have it back. Okay, folks, so we're definitely going to have to pull the heads off this thing and at very least do the gaskets and probably do some studs. Uh, the ARP studs are really expensive, but I think it's worth it. And besides that, this it really runs good. Now, this thing would have built pressure instead of foamed like that if the cap would have been good, but that cap was basically worthless. Uh, we'll have to put a bumper on this one and do a little bit of other stuff. I did get the other one dropped off at a buddy of mine's to paint and so hopefully it'll be done in a week or two no rush but he's got a shop big enough to put it in and do it inside so uh, I think it'll it'll turn out really good and let me see uh, this has got a little bit of a, a little bit of rust on the top where the bed was mounted down on it nothing major at all so we'll have to get that cleaned up uh, transmission I will be changing it because I'm lucky enough that my buddy check these trucks and uh, I was able to get a build sheet on each truck so I know what they were ordered with what gears they've got in the rear you know GBW's the front axles everything and I do know that this one does not have a gear in the PTO uh, the one that we pulled the cab off of of Bobby's does so we'll be probably pulling that transmission and sticking in here and it'll just be easier to swap it over that way I can run a PTO on the transmission uh, let me see it started right back up today no problem. I pulled that cover off. Uh, don't look like it's going to be that bad. I mean, main thing is getting everything out of the way. But uh, I do have a fellow that's going to start helping on the weekends. Uh, young guy, 18 years old. Now, he's came to two of the rat rod builds and helped build. And he's worked at a restaurant for two years. 
and he's ready to get out of that. He's, like I said, 18 years old, so he's young. Uh, his fam, whole family's mechanics and fabricators, and I've known his grandpa for uh, just about 30 years, and he's, uh, we're going on 30 years, and uh, he is a car customizer, chops tops and all that stuff, so this, this boy's gonna work out really good, I'm sure. And uh, so he's gonna, he's still in high school, so he's gonna switch to just working on weekends. He's been working at night, you know, uh, and on weekends, but he's just gonna work weekends and help me out, getting caught up on a bunch of this stuff. And uh, anyway, so I'll probably show some videos of this and we've got some other stuff we need to do, but uh, I'm gonna try to, definitely try to get this in there. And we may, I don't know if we're going to pull the cab or if we're just going to raise it up. We may pull the cab off. It may be easier to do that. And I'll probably get James over here before it's over with the, the GM tech to, to help out. It makes it a whole lot quicker when you got somebody that's done it a bunch of times and knows, what, you know, knows what's going on. But uh, anyway, you'll see more on these. We're going to do them two engines. We're going to tear them down. I'm going to video them. Uh, that may be what Noah does this weekend. Uh, either way, we'll video it. And... Uh, you know, I've got some other stuff we're going to be able to jump on and get done. And, you know, I don't know, anybody that's worked for themselves will know that when there's somebody here or, you know, somebody's working for you, it sort of helps motivate you too because uh, with uh, running all the record calls I run, you know, I get wore out and tired and, and you know, you got a choice between forcing yourself to work or uh, uh, taking a break and you know, I, w I would rather work but sometimes it's a whole lot easier to take a break But when you have somebody working for you, that's you know, you got to be there to you know Point them in the right direction and teach them all you can teach them and uh, especially, you know, like in his situation you uh, Seem to get a whole lot more done. I've had a whole lot more luck like that and uh, so Anyway, I appreciate it and I'll show you more. Bye